For over 30 years, the Lynx helicopter has been in service with the Army Air Corps. It is also the fastest helicopter in the world, and that record may never be beaten. We're finding out about the history and the future of the Lynx helicopter in this month's edition of Young Eagles. With over 30 years of service, the Lynx helicopter has been a mainstay of the Army Air Corps' operational ability. Its initial design started in the mid-1960s as a replacement for the Westland Scout and Wasp helicopters, and it first came into service with the Army in 1977 as a utility helicopter. But over the years it has been used by the Army in a number of roles. Tactical Troop and Store Carrier, Airborne Command, Casualty Evacuation, Armed Escort and Reconnaissance, and in anti-tank and air-to-service strike roles. And of course, Goodbye. its starring role in the Blue Eagles helicopter display team. And Callum will be having a close-up look at the Lynx with the 2009 Blue Eagles Lynx pilot later Stop in the show. Connected to the other, so only... One of the reasons the Lynx helicopter is such a great success was the radical design of its semi-rigid rotor and its honeycomb sandwiched blades. And here at the Museum of Army Flying, you'll find Lynx XX-153. Now this is a very special Lynx helicopter. It broke the world speed record for helicopters back in 1972, when it achieved its amazing speed of 199.92 miles per hour. The Lynx is designed to be an efficient fighting machine. And in its early years, the Army Air Corps primarily trained to fight battles in the hills and forests of Northern Europe. But in August 1990, Iraqi forces invaded Kuwait and diplomatic efforts to resolve the conflict failed. The Army Air Corps were deployed to the deserts of Saudi Arabia to prepare for war. In operations such as this, the Lynx works alongside the Gazelle helicopter. And let's hear from the officer commanding 659 Squadron on the eve of the battle. Richard, we're standing here now in a compound which is called Flash 2 um, and you're just about to deploy to the desert. Can you tell us all you'd like to about the squadron? Yeah, sure. Um, behind us, uh, over there, you can see that I've got uh, six gazelles behind there and one lynx. Now, the gazelles are the FAC and AOP aircraft within the squadron and also the command gazelle, which is Papa, just over there. And uh, the Lynx, of which one is here, and there are five others still, uh, five others still being modified, provide the anti-tank fire team of the, Gaza, uh, of the squadron. So the squadron consists of a total of 12 aircraft, six Lynx and six Gazelle. Our main war role within the squadron is uh, anti-armor, uh, with the Lynx providing the anti-tank uh, punch in the squadron. They are all equipped with eight tow missiles, each with a range of 3,750 metres. Uh, the Gazelle provide the far support for the Lynx in that the, I've divided the Gazelle flights into two types of far support. One is the forward air controlling element and they uh, bring in the fighter ground attack aircraft and the other type of uh, Gazelle is the air observation post Gazelle which uh, provides the for, uh, forward controlling of the guns. And what we do is we put together a mission where we have a combination of artillery, FGA and uh, anti-tank links in a combination, in a sequence, thus creating the maximum firepower we can on the enemy all at once at the same time. I'd command the whole thing from my command gazelle and I actually do the coordination of the three elements, air, aviation and uh, artillery. You are very confident now that your squadron can do the business? I'm very confident. Uh, we're, we are confident that we're particularly within the all arms battle, our particular part, our role within that battle, we're, we're do well. I'm sure we'll equip ourselves well. I think in the initial stages of the battle, uh, we probably won't be used that much. We may be used in the casualty evacuation role, where the Lynx will obviously be the machine that will be doing all the work. During the breakthrough through the Iraqi defences, 
that's not our battle. That's a battle of uh, attrition. That's a, that's a very static battle. Our role will come in once we've broken out the other side and we get into a mobile fluid battle. That's where we can actually do our best uh, and, and contribute the, the, the best we possibly can. The final word, Richard, about morale of your men. Excellent. They are a bloody good bunch of guys and I couldn't be going to war with a better bunch. The ground battle to liberate Q8 was successfully completed in five days. And 20 years later, the Lynx is still working hard in harsh desert environments, such as their current deployment in Afghanistan. And back at Middle Wallop, Callum is with Warrant Officer Mark Howard, the 2009 Lynx display pilot. OK then, Callum, this is the Mark 7 Lynx. That's what we're going to be flying today on the display. Uh, quite an old aircraft, but still very, very agile. Holds the world speed record. It's as fast as if you get a Veyron which is fairly quick, yeah, 249.1 miles an hour. Uh, it's a good aircraft because it's got two engines, so if one breaks, we can still fly away. I've heard that it can fly upside down. It can, and if you watch the display today, we'll turn upside down about seven or eight times. I can't remember exactly, but we do it in lots of ways. One is we'll sit in a hover, and we'll just go backwards from that. Another is we do a barrel roll, which you've probably seen aeroplanes do. Mm -hmm. And the final one is we'll just do a normal loop. So <laughs> is, well, this helicopter is like, the red arrow in the red arrows, but it's for the Blue Eagles. Exactly right, yeah. It's, it's a good, uh, good description, actually. Should we have a little walk around and have a look in it, then? Yep. OK, walking around. The thing that makes it so agile is the rotor head. Normally on, on uh, helicopters, there's lots of bearings and things that twist. Yep. This one doesn't have it. It just has a solid, moulded piece of titanium, which is worth more than most Rolls-Royce, just that one little piece of titanium up there. Uh, working our way around, there's not much to go wrong. Inside there, we've got one engine with a big hot exhaust and it's just got exactly the same on the other end. Nice big fat tail boom, which just takes, this takes all the twist of the aircraft, so it has to be quite tough all the way down. Um, so like, there must be a lot of power going through the An propeller. An awful lot, yeah. And yeah. it must be quite light, because yeah. that feels like quite solid and hard. And yeah, but there's nothing in it, you can hear it's, it's completely hollow, which makes it nice and light. But you're right, you've got all these little bits of metal stuck over each other, which all add up and make it really, really tough. And when we throw it around and twist it and turn it upside down, all this tries to twist, and I put lots of pedal movement in, which means this big piece here is pushing the tail that way, then it's pulling it this way really hard. And this all takes that with no problem whatsoever. Does no damage, and it's quite happy. So is it, being a Blue Eagle, is, it must be take years of training and... Well, they take the Blue Eagle pilots from the normal pilot world. Uh, ordinarily, they've done probably eight, nine, ten years of flying it first. And then what happens is the guy who flew last year trained me to fly this year. Do you create your own stunts and tricks? Yes, there's a whole load of individual manoeuvres we're allowed to do. And it's up to the display team then to put them all together in something that we think will be pleasing to the audience. Cool. So, after 30 years of service with the Army Air Corps, what does the future hold for the Lynx? Well, a few months ago, Jake visited the Augusta Western Helicopter Factory at Yeovil to find out about helicopter design. And at the factory at that time were a number of Lynx helicopters that were receiving major upgrades to equip them for future missions. But his main reason for being there was to see the next generation Lynx helicopter, the AW159 Wildcat. The Wildcat was the first helicopter to be designed using digital technology and in November 2009 it had its maiden flight at the Augusta Western factory in Yeovil. The Wildcat will be entering service with the Army Air Corps in a few years time and it will build on the reputation of a Lynx helicopter ensuring that its proud heritage lives on into the future.